Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Rempel, Paralympian keynote speaker and creator of the Resilience Toolbox. And in this video, I wanna chat with you about how to avoid burnout. Let's get into it. So one of the biggest challenges we often are facing today is that our schedules tend to be like back-to-back -back meetings. You know, working in a virtual world, there are so many demands that have been put upon us about trying to, you know, navigate an uncharted, uh, uncharted territory. Uh, there's less travel involved, so often it can be easy to fill your schedule with another meeting instead of the travel time you would take on the road, or maybe walking to another appointment if we were actually um, still getting together in person. And so it can be easy to find ourselves falling into a trap of potentially burning out. Um, even just experiencing a lot of video meetings every single day. You know, Zoom fatigue will start to take a toll on you. And before we know it, uh, <clears throat> we're just going to find ourselves in a downward spiral and potentially at a place where we may not feel like we can get out of. So what I like to do here is share with you some of the tips and strategies that I've lived in my own life and that I help organizations with as well in order to help employees and the individuals themselves um, in a from a management and leadership perspective, see how we can help teach others and how we can make sure our, ourself that we avoid burnout. Tip number one is to understand the difference between maker's time versus manager's time. Now, I'm gonna link this article in the uh, description below or in the blog article here that uh, a guy named Paul Graham wrote an article years ago titled Maker's Time versus Manager's Time. And what it simply does is uses computer programmers as an example in the sense that there are certain work we do that requires a certain amount of time to get deep into that thought in order to be productive in order to yield a result and if we keep getting interrupted in what he calls that would be maker's time where we need to make something create something get focused is that we end up losing so much uh productivity that trying to get back into it that not only time is wasted but it t takes uh, an additional toll on our mental energy. And if we instead can schedule our day between having maker time at a set periods of the day and manager's time at a different period of the day, we can be more effective. Now, the next question is what's manager's time? Well, manager's time is when we start, to, when we do take appointments um, on a whim, um, back to back as necessary in order to meet others' expectations. Um, while instead of, um, when we focus on maker's time, it's got a lot to do with meeting our own expectations. So if we can start to understand the difference between um, maker's time and manager's time, we can start to structure our days better to help avoid burnout. Tip number two is to prioritize self-care. So again, when we look at our schedule, it can be easy to time block everything from a nine to five window, but not what we do before the day starts or when the day ends. And so what could you start to time block in your morning or in your evening which will allow you to prioritize self-care. Now, if you're anything like me, what I know is that I'd like to get my, I like to prioritize my self-care in the morning so I know that I can get it out of the way, but also make sure that I am the priority before I start the day because if we wait until the end of the day, things can get away from us and then we end up neglecting our own self because we prioritize everyone else. So what, is it, what does that look like for you? Is it going for a walk in the morning for 10 or 20 or 30 minutes? Is it doing some stretching? Um, if you can exercise some other form, go do that. Um, is it reading? Is it meditation? Maybe it's just spending some time with your family. But whatever that is, whether that's in the morning or in the evening, how can you create some space in your calendar to prioritize your self-care and put you first? Tip number three is to schedule buffers. As an example, uh, one of my close friends, Matthew Stork, he's a postdoctor research fellow at the University of British Columbia who um, or released a study around exercise snacks. And I'll link that into the uh, description below here as well. But basically what it is, is to see both the physical benefit and also the mental benefit from taking even just 10 minutes throughout the day periodically for what he calls an exercise snack. And so what is that? I mean, it's simply, you know, whether that's even in where you are at right now, just standing up and, and doing some squats or stretching above your head or leaning to the side or stepping outside your house to go get some fresh air. Could you 
schedule in a buffer in the day in between meetings for an exercise snack, or could you even schedule in a buffer in your standard meetings? So let's say typically you'd book an hour on a video call. I know that some organizations, for example, have just implemented mandatory 50 minute meetings. So they're no longer taking our meetings. Everything is a 50 minute meeting with the intention that we're going to be finished at that time so that each of us have 10 minutes to decompress, disconnect before our next meeting. So how can you schedule in a buffer to help you avoid burnout? Tip number four is to find a hobby. So <laughs> you're like, okay, Kev, what am I supposed to be doing for finding a hobby? Like what, I'm going to pick up arts and crafts. And <laughs> the truth is, yeah, maybe you might, maybe that is the answer. For me, something I found really helpful to avoid burnout and help me mentally disconnect throughout the day or, and or at the end of the day is I actually picked up doing puzzles. I get a, a 500 piece puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. And if I just set my phone in a different room and then go work on that puzzle, um, I'll use something like this here. I have what's called a time timer. So I don't have my phone for a timer, but you have a visual representation with no sound about how long I want to work on something for. And then, yeah, there you go. Is that this can just be um, something for you to mentally disconnect and go work on a hobby, letting your mind drift away and stay focused into something, quickly disconnecting from electronics. Uh, or alternatively, maybe it's painting, maybe it's sewing, um, maybe it's drawing, like maybe it's writing. I don't know what that is, but what is something small and simple that will allow you to find a like a small hobby? I know that some people even play video games and that's a whole another conversation where maybe you can get addictive, but I know people who use it strategically to mentally shut off their brain. And so if you want to avoid burnout from work and filling your day full of tasks for your business or your employer is what can you do such as finding a small hobby, something that will allow you to disconnect and quickly focus on something else other than work. And tip number five is to actually take a nap. Now, <laughs> this is hard because I know it's going to be like maybe feeling guilty to take time out of the, out of your day to go lie down, but the benefits of napping are extremely high for what low investment it takes to actually take a minute to pause and go lie down. First question may be how long should you nap and what are some of the benefits? Well, studies have shown that typically between a 10 to 20 minute window, is an ideal time frame for an adult to take a nap, to get into a slow wave of sleep, for you to go through a cycle and come back out feeling refreshed. And what are some of the benefits? Well, we know that, you know, it can be that you feel ref uh, refreshed and energized, uh, improved concentration memory. You have an opportunity to um, disconnect at the same time, refocus when you start your tasks, tasks, I can't even say it, tasks again. And it helps you avoid burnout, really, because it's gonna give you a chance to recharge your batteries through the day. So where in your day could you just take a brief moment and go take a nap? I remember when I was training for the Paralympics, that was like one of my secret weapons is to just have that um, boost of energy to really give myself a moment to recharge so I'm not trying to burn the candle at both ends um, from the start of the day to the end of the day and give that, uh, my body that, or my mind especially, that chance to just kind of catch back up and then get the second, um, second breath, second wave to um, carry on throughout the rest of the day. So as a quick recap, five tips to help avoid burnout. Number one is to learn the difference between maker's time versus manager's time. Number two is to prioritize self-care. Number three is to schedule buffers in between your meetings and throughout your day. Number four is to find a hobby, something to disconnect yourself throughout the day and through the evening. And number five is to actually take a nap. Now, if you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to check out kevinremple.com slash toolbox, where you can check out more about the Resilience Toolbox and some of the other strategies to help you avoid burnout and build and develop your mental resilience. And as always, I just wanna encourage you to keep focusing on small things that make a big difference. And by doing so, each of us can become a hero in our own movie. Thanks so much, see you again soon.